morning and uh, thank you for joining us in today's webinar. We're going to look at how to streamline our field activities or our field workflows using ArcGIS Field Maps, which is one of our field applications that we have within the ArcGIS portfolio that allows us to do this. But before looking at ArcGIS Field Maps, it is important for us for us to first of all look at why do we actually um, do field data collection and when we ask ourselves that question the answer is definitely because data plays an integral part in what we do as businesses as governments and entities and even um, as people who are in the policy making space now data has become a great driving force for any decisions that we make, they allow us to drive change in the areas that we work in. And this is because with data, we are able to not only identify challenges that are within our communities, but also make strategic decisions based on the data that we've collected. And also more importantly, realize the impact of our work and know if the efforts we are actually putting in into these different places, this different industry, government entities, if these um, efforts are actually uh, working or they're driving any impact. And once we've realized that, then we need to ask ourselves, how do we collect data that is accurate? How do we collect data that will allow us to be able to drive these policies, create these policies, um, decide decisions that are going to be made for the different areas that we are in? And doing that then drives us to looking at applications like what we are going to work with today, which is ArcGIS field maps. Now, in ArcGIS, we have uh, a concept that allows us to be able to look at the different field operations that allow us to be able to interact with the different applications within the system. And these operations include activities that may run from being able to coordinate your workforce to finally being able to evaluate the results that you get from the field and actually use these results to drive change. You can use um, dashboards to be able to visualize. You can use maps to to be able to visualize the results as they are coming in and all this can allow you to be able to then um, decide what application are you going to use to ensure coordination between your workforce and in this we can consider applications like ArcGIS workforce to being able to do data capture when you're talking about capturing data if it's map centric data if it's form centric data then what are you actually going to use or what tool are you going to use to be able to do that now one thing I'd like to mention is that uh, regardless of the industry that you're in, regardless of the space that you're in, if it's uh, the nonprofits, if it's healthcare, if it's government, if it's the utilities, all these uh, industries, all these spaces can benefit or can gain impact by using any of the software that you're going to look at or talk about today. So don't be discouraged and think that it's going to only apply in one industry. This can be applied across board. Now, there are a number of mobile GIS solutions and different methods of collecting data that we look at when you're talking about ArcGIS field operations and when you're talking about ArcGIS field applications. So you may want to collect data that is more geocentric. And in this, we are talking about more map centric data. So if you want to collect data that allows you to be able to capture uh, points on a map, capture lines on a map, capture polygons on a map, then you can be able to use tools like ArcGIS field maps to be able to do that on your mobile phone. If you want to capture more form centric data, and when I talk about form centric data, think about forms, questionnaires, this then you can um, choose to use tools like ArcGIS Survey123 to, to then be able to create your forms, configure the forms either on the Survey123 Connect, which is the desktop application, or Survey123 web application to then configure forms, whether they are complex or simple, and have your field workforce download these forms in their mobile phone and go out into the field and collect the data. Now, there's another method or experience that you may want your workforce to have, which is when you want them to collect more picture-centric or have a more rapid experience when they are doing data collection or data capture. Here we then talk of tools like ArcGIS Quick Capture. This is a very simple tool. You get to configure your schema either in ArcGIS Online or in ArcGIS Pro. Once that is configured, you add it into 
you use um, the ArcGIS Quick Capture web app to be able to configure the layout of the buttons, the size of the buttons, and then this is what your workforce is going to download on their mobile phones and utilize to do data collection. Now, there's another perspective when it comes to doing your field activities, navigation, which is very crucial. How does my team move from point A to point B? How does my team ensure that when they are finished with work in point A, they are easily able to get to point B and still do the work that is needed there? That is where we have tools like ArcGIS Navigator, which will allow us to then be able to um, move from points to points, do our work from one area to the next without actually losing time in between. And then finally, workforce management, which is also critical when it comes to ensuring that work is being done um, the right way by the right people, by the right teams, then you get to have access workforce to allow you to do this. There are two components to workforce. We have the dispatcher face, we have the mobile worker face, and each of these does something different. Teams can have um, the team leads being the dispatchers who now hand over the jobs and the tasks that need to be done, while we have the workers who then access the mobile applications and use these mobile applications to carry out the activities that have been handed down to them by the dispatchers. And all these tools play a critical role in ensuring that your workflow within ArcGIS is critical and that it's able to get um, done in time and more importantly that your data is able to be collected based on the experience that each of your workers is going to have or needs to have in the field. This brings us to ArcGIS Field Maps. Now ArcGIS Field Maps is an all-in-one application, as I mentioned, that allows us to do data-driven data collection methods and helps our mobile workers to be able to not only perform data collection and editing, but also find assets while they're in the field um, and also report their real-time locations while in the field. And the beauty about this application is that because it is built on ArcGIS, everyone and when I say everyone I mean with whether you're in the field whether you're in the office you're all benefiting from using the same data no one is working with data that is outside of the system you're picking information that is stored within your databases you're picking information that is stored within your ArcGIS online accounts and all of you are benefiting from that now another advantage to using ArcGIS field maps is that the data is current, it's 24-7 updating. Whenever someone is adding data, the data is added to the system as soon as it has been added on the mobile phone. Now, the, this means that whether you're looking at a dashboard, whether you're looking at a web map, everything is benefiting from the most recent data that has been added. So whatever you're seeing is what has been added in the system, and that is key when we're talking about transparency or transparency in the field activities. And uh, we also look at it from the perspective of it being easy to deploy and easily learn. So no one has to like go and look for a manual to be able to know how to do this. It's very easy once someone knows how to operate it, you can easily go out into the field and be able to collect your data. Now there's a workflow that allows us to be able to interact. Uh, we looked at this from looking at the field activities. It's the same thing that applies to you using ArcGIS field maps. You start from first of all planning and planning means creating your schemas in ArcGIS Pro, creating your schemas in ArcGIS Online if you're not able to use ArcGIS Pro, planning the areas that you need to go and have people do data collection. If it means adding other data sets to um, complement what you're already want to be collected, then you can add that. And then coordinating, coordinating in the sense of deciding. We have a team that is going to do collection in zone A, if that is what we're working with, or another team that is going to do collection in zone B. And then allowing them to navigate. You're moving from the office to the first place where you'll be doing collection, to the next place where you'll be doing your data collection, and so on and so forth. And finally, after collection is now understanding. You're understanding what we are going to collect if 
it means looking at the legends, switching off some of the layers so that you can gain more insight in what is actually of interest to you, then you can use that. And then finally, capturing and capturing in the sense of are we capturing from centric data? And in this case, we are capturing geocentric data. So are we capturing geocentric data? If you're capturing that, is it lines? Is it polygons? Is it um, points on a map? Then you get to decide what you're actually going to be picking whenever you're doing your data capture. Once you've done that, your data is now being fed into the system, then it's finally to monitor. And where do you want to monitor this? You can either use the same web map that you used in the ArcGIS field maps application, or you can create dashboards as an extension to allow you to better visualize whatever um, information you're working with or whatever information you're collecting or updating. If you're doing updates on the map, then you're going to use that. So that is basically the workflow that we are looking at. Now, I'd like to mention that there are also a number of components that we have when you're working with ArcGIS field maps. Now, the two components that make up this system is the field maps web application and the field maps mobile application. Now, the field maps web application is for you to prepare your maps for the field. So if you want to change elements like the pop-ups, if you want to change elements like the uh, symbology of the map, if you want to um, change elements like um, the layers, you want to remove some of the layers from the map, then you can use ArcGIS field maps, the web application to be able to carry this activity out. And then we have what allows you to now do your work in the field, do the actual data collection. And here we are looking at field maps, mobile application, which you can download in your Play Store or your App Store. Now this is where you can download it. After you've downloaded it, you'll be prompted to sign in. Signing in will allow you to access content that is within your organization. If you're in groups, then you can access content within those groups, but you can do that on your mobile phone. So after you've downloaded your map on the, you've downloaded your application on the mobile phone, you sign in, you can now carry out the field activities that you need to carry out as a mobile worker. Now, um, before we do the, the demo, I thought it would be important for us to look at three key components or key three capabilities that are found within this application that can play a vital role in all the industries that we may all be serving in. And um, one of them is being able to uh, map view and also markup. Now, map viewing and markup ability allows you to know what's around you, one, and it also allows you to know where you are, which is critical. For example, if you're going to a place where you're not familiar with, the area may be not only unfamiliar, but also um, a bit risky for you as a mobile worker. You need to know where you are so that you know what, to, what routes to follow, which places to avoid, and so on. So knowing where you are is key, and this is a tool that can allow you to be able to know that and also locate assets and information about this asset. So for example, if you're doing asset management, how will you know where this asset is located? How will you know what information is for these assets? You'll rely on already existing data, which you'll find most of the times once you're creating your map, you've already embedded on a base map and that is what someone is using. Now, this information will be critical when someone is either trying to update these data sets or trying to add new data sets into the feature. So being able to locate the assets and information about them is very critical. And then there's the capability of being able to work in remote areas. So you'll find there are times when you're sending people out into the field to do data collection, they'll get to points where internet connection is not guaranteed. So does that mean they don't have to work then? No, ArcGIS field maps allows them to be able to still have access to offline areas and these offline areas will still have uh, the rich interactive maps within it. They'll still have the accurate information that was initially put into the map in it. So they are not working outside of of what is already in the system, they are using it just in a setting that allows them to work offline. Now, once they still do the data collection and get to an area where internet connection is there, the information will automatically be synced into the system and whatever they picked is what is going to still appear. We also have another capability, which is data capture and editing. 
Now, ArcGIS Field Maps allows you to not only digitally transform the traditional paper-based um, data collection activity that we had, but also accelerate the time that you use to do your data collection and the time that you use to actually make decisions when it comes to uh, making decisions when you're collecting data. And the reason for this, as I mentioned, is because of the dynamic nature of the form that we use. It picks, it's connected to the ArcGIS system. So whatever we're doing is able to transform into the maps that other people are seeing. The high accuracy GPS and high accuracy, you can choose to set how accurate you want your GPS to be so that when someone is picking, it's either they need to have their GPS on their phone set or even when they're setting it, how accurate do you want it to be? And it can also be used whether someone is indoors and outdoors, which is very key because you'll find that people who uh, do data collection within buildings. So they need to also collect, but when they're collecting, if they're in the first floor, can they pick data on the first floor? If they're in the um, second floor, in a different um, side of the building, can they pick that and actually be able to see that we're collecting data from a different side, which also allows us to ensure that we're getting the most accurate and the most um, integrity kind of format of that data set. Finally, we have operational awareness, which is a capability that allows us to be able to work with this tool quite effectively. And in this case, uh, ArcGIS Field Maps provides us with situational awareness when you're in the field or when you're in the office. Now, uh, we may create areas, for example, for our mobile workers to now receive location alerts. So if, for example, we're sending people to a place where there's maybe floods and we still want these people to do their work, but we want them to be notified when they are entering these places. Can we create zones for them or geofences so that they can receive location alerts and share these location alerts when they're doing their work, whether it's indoors or outdoors, we can be able to now um, realize what they're doing and how they're doing it. And they can also get notified when they are going into these places and leaving this particular places. Now, ArcGIS field maps does not work on its own. There are times when you may combine it with other applications to actually gain more from it or to use more um, of the capabilities that are found within the ArcGIS space. Now, for example, if you're talking about being able to monitor collecting data, but also monitoring data, you can combine these two with tools like dashboards. If you're looking at how do you send your workforce out, but you want them to still be able to utilize these two tools, if it's survey one, two, three, and field maps, you can combine those three and have them as, um, as a group that you're utilizing. And then if you want to prepare data, but you also want this data to be used in the field, regardless of which application you're using, whether it's Survey123, Quick Capture, or Field Maps, you can create this in ArcGIS Pro, create your schemas in ArcGIS Pro, configure these um, maps in ArcGIS Pro, share them to your ArcGIS Online accounts, and consume them in either of these applications. And finally, you may find that maybe you have more geocentric kind of data um, collection that needs to be done, but you also have more form centric kind of data collection that needs to be done. You can choose to combine the two using field maps and survey one, two, three, and have your data still get to be collected. So we'll jump straight into our demo, and we're going to start with we're going to start with um, ArcGIS Pro. So we're going to start with ArcGIS Pro. And as I mentioned, when it comes to working with field applications, the first thing that you need to realize is what data are you using? What fields are you using? Or what feature layers are you using? What fields are found within these features? If you want to look at elements like domains, what domains do you have for these fields? Now we can look at an example here of the water utilities meters, which allows us to be able to see the meters that we have within um, the zone that we selected. And I'd just like to mention that this is dummy data. It's not accurate. We formed this for this particular purpose. Um, so 
this data, we're looking at the meters, but within our meters, I want my team to do data collection, but actually be able to do data collection and follow. Um, for example, if I want to show their rares and the current um, paid meters, I want them to be able to only capture their rares and the paid meters, but I don't want them to fill this out. So it will mean me, I'm looking at my domains, which you find when you go to data, we have a place for domains here which will mean me had done this previously creating a domain that will allow me to know the pay status of my meters and within this pay status I'll have a code for the currents and I'll have another code for the arrears so this means when someone is doing data collection they'll only need to choose from either current or arrears they'll not be typing anything out and this allows for seamless data collection across board whatever someone will be filling in probably in this area will be similar to what someone will be filling in in this area whether they are picking this meter as a current or as an arrears kind of meter now after you've decided what your fields will look like after you decided what your domains and subtypes will look like the next step is to share so this you can choose to share either as a web map or as a web layer if you're only looking to collect data for one of the feature layers that you have but after deciding this then you go to your ArcGIS online account. So after you've shared, you go to you go to your ArcGIS online account, and it is in your ArcGIS online account that you will now be able to. It is in your ArcGIS online account that you'll now be able to see the layer that you shared. It is a hosted layer. You can decide how you want it. If you want it to be shared only within your organization or with everyone or just within your own content, you can choose that from here. And then there are other elements that you may also decide if you want them to be editable, if you want these layers to um to be used for public data collection. If, for example, you want to do public data collection for people, you can decide that from here. So if you go to settings, you'll come here and you can choose to do public data collection if that is the intent of this um, web map. Or you can choose to enable editing and this will allow people in your team to be able to edit. So you can enable editing, you can enable sync for when people are offline, when they come back it will sync the information that they've collected. And these are the elements that will ensure that wherever someone is, whatever information they fill, that information is going to be an accurate one. Now after you've ensured everything is okay with your layer, you save it as a web map and that web map is what you're going to use in ArcGIS field maps. So ArcGIS field map, you'll find it in the app launcher. It's usually called the field maps designer. This name was updated. It's field maps designer now. And this is what you get to utilize to ensure that you're interacting with all the maps that you intend to use. This is your interface for map management. You can delete some of the maps that you no longer need. You can um, edit some of the maps that you have, or you can even create new maps if you want to and ensure that when you're creating those maps, you have preset fields that you know you need to have within your data sets or your feature layers. And this is what will assist you in doing the data collection. Now, after you've done that, the next step is to definitely open a map and you'll realize your interface will change to a space where you're now able to manage how the layout of your forms are going to look like, the overview of your map, the geofences, the offline areas, decide the app settings and even the sharing level. Now, the overview page is for you to manage how the map will look like when someone is accessing it. If you have a thumbnail, this can be images of projects that you're doing, can be images of cities that you're working in. You can add them here. You can also edit the title of the map. Currently, it's called Nairobi Water Network, but you can choose to edit it and give it a different name. And that is what is going to be there. You can give it a summary as well. And more importantly, you'll find there are times when you want to edit the map, but you don't want to go back to ArcGIS Online. You want to still remain in the same space and do that. You'll open either in Map Viewer or in Map Viewer Classic. And here you can change some of the key elements that you may be looking to change. If it's the symbology, if it's the 
removing some of the layers from your map. If it's to change the base map, if you no longer want to use the current base map, you can change all that here. And after you've changed it, you'll save and saving will allow you to now access a more updated version of the map. So after you've done that, the next step is to configure the forms. Now, there are some times when you'll find um, some of the forms will be automatically um, put into the form builder. And this is the form builder and this is your form. So you'll find that sometimes some of the layers will automatically just pick the fields that are within your layers and add them into your form. Now, if you don't want some of the fields, you can choose to delete them or you can come here and decide what field. In this case, you can see we have 48 fields. I may not need all the 48. So I'll only select the ones that make sense for my data collection team to use and I add them into the form. Now, doing that will allow you to be able to have all this added into your form and then you will choose. You can see I have 12 in one group and I have seven in another group. So I've decided what I want to actually add into my form so that whatever people are feeling actually matches what the intention of our data collection exercise is. Now, after you've decided that, you can do that for all the other layers. Um, you can see this one, we have 54, but we only want probably 10. So you can decide what you want to actually do data collection for. After that, the next step is to now decide, is there any other extra thing that you may want or you intend to add into your map? Now, you may miss some of the elements here. For example, if I want to do a data collection for the water main um, main lines and I want to know the date and time that this data was collected, I can pick some of the form elements from the form builder and drag them into my form. For example, I can drag this into my form up here and that is going to be my date. So I can give it the name date and the field name will automatically um, pick from, from what I have here and I can make it a required element. And after making it a required element, I'll go ahead and save. Um, give me just one minute. Um, date of capture. Okay, so you'll find that um, the display name and the field name will have to be different. This is what will be displayed, but this is what will appear in my attribute table when I'm looking at the attribute table. So they may need to have a differentiation when um, someone is looking at it in the map. So you'll see I've added a form element and you don't need to just add that. You may want to add other things. If you want to add numbers, whether it's double, whether it's uh, just a single integer, when you want to add texts, if you want people to put in their names, you can add a multi-line, a single line, and that will allow you to be able to to do that now if for example i want to group elements i want to create i don't want someone to choose from a whole set of um, lists i want to group these elements to be able to capture the different components in this case you can see we are working with water so maybe when i'm picking water meter details i may have a group for the meter details but more than that i may also have a group for the person who actually did the data collection to allow us to be able to monitor who and when and how are they doing this data collection for us when it comes to assets for the meters. Then you can group them by creating um, groups for meter. You can see this is a group that has 12 details or 12 fields. And we also have another group here for the inspector, which have seven um, features within it that need to be collected. And if you want to create a group, you simply pick out this element here under the layout, and that is what you're going to drag and drop within your form. And that will allow you to then drag items and put them into your group for ease of people using and for to decomplex or to decongest how your form looks like, which is very important to make sure our team is also not getting tired when they're doing data collection. Now, that is what happens when you're configuring the forms or when you're trying to configure the forms for data collection. Now, the next element is geofencing. Now, geofencing is simply um, what happens or what you create to allow your team to be notified when they're leaving an area 
or when they are getting into an area. And as I mentioned earlier, geofences are very important when we're looking at sending our teams or sending our workforce into places that they need a lot on. For example, if you're sending people to places that are flood, um, that have floods, places that maybe we have fire hazards, places that maybe we have um, storms coming, you can create zones for these areas, you can create geofences for these areas, and when they are going to those places or when they are uh, leaving those places, they will get a lot um, for them to know that, yes, I'm leaving this place to go to. I'm leaving this place and I'm going to a storm um, kind of a place that is either going to have a storm or already has a storm or a place that is flooded or is almost getting flooded, a place that has insecurity or things that may be critical for them to realize before they actually get to those places. After that, we have the element of uh, being able to enable offline areas and offline areas, as I mentioned, are very critical for our workforce who may be going to places that internet connection is not guaranteed. Now, you can choose to have it offline and when you switch this on, it's going to be enabled. But more than that, you will need to ensure that all the layers that you have are synced to be used for, uh, are synced to be used for offline content um, collect data collection. So if you select this, it's going to refresh the content in the map. Any changes you made in the overview uh, page when you're trying to work with your map viewer are going to be reflected upon doing um, upon refreshing this button. Your layers are going to be updated. After you've done that, there's the map areas. And in map areas, this simply allows you to be able to manage the offline areas that your workforce can access. Now, you can have as many offline areas as you want. I have two here, but this is simply to just show you how you can do that. So you can see we have an offline area for this zone. This is zone A. And we have a general offline area for the entire place. So if anyone goes to this place and they don't have internet connection, they can download this space and still be able to access their data. Now you create offline areas by cl simply clicking on create offline area. And then you will choose where exactly do you want to create the zone. So you'll choose this here to sketch a rectangular map. And then we can pick all this space and we're going to give it zone B, the name zone B. And then we're going to save that. So after we've saved, you'll see we now have, we now have um, zone for zone A. We have an offline area for zone B and we have an offline area for the general um, map that we're interested in. So that is what happens. And then when someone goes to the field, they can simply download either of these places as an offline area. And when they don't have internet, they can simply go ahead and use what they downloaded as a base for their data collection. So after that, we can now look at managing the app settings. And managing the app settings is simply you being able to decide when it comes to collection, the high uh, or the rate of accuracy that you're looking for. If it's uh, to set the accuracy at 10 meters, then you can do that. You can use also centimeters if that is what you use within your organization. And then um, you can delete or discard all points. You can allow for GPS averaging. Uh, you can also allow for photo upload size if you want people to upload either the actual images to small images, then you can allow for that. But you can also allow for them to be able to filter layers, um, location sharing, which is also critical. So let's say you want people to have their GPS turned on before they collect data to ensure that wherever they are, the phone is able to pick or the tablet they're using is able to pick. Then you can choose to uh, put this on when they're collecting, they'll have to switch on their GPS and that is what is going to be picked. And then um, after you decided these elements, the next step is to share. So you can set the sharing level either to the organization, which means everyone within my account is going to, or within my organizational account is going to access it, or you can leave it as your own, meaning no one else can see it, or everyone 
it can be used for public data collection so everyone can be able to utilize it but more importantly you can edit group sharing you can create groups for the different teams each team can have this um, field web map that you've used added into their group and that is what they're going to access when they are doing data collection so after you've decided that then the next step is to go ahead and utilize this map that you've created or these forms that you've created in our mobile application. So I'll just stop sharing this and connect to my phone so that we can see how we can see how um, the mobile application looks like. Please give me one second. So, no, I don't. So, we are going to look at our mobile device, which I have connected on my phone. Now, the first step, as I mentioned, is for you to download ArcGIS field maps from Play Store or App Store if you're using the iPhone and then after you've downloaded it you're going to sign in and signing in will allow you to be able to access content within your organization so this is my account for this but you can change in between accounts if you want to if you want to sign out you can sign out from here if you want to sign back in you can choose to sign back in and that is what is going to reflect after that you get to access the different maps within your organizational account both shared within the organization or the ones that you've created yourself and in this case you can see that for mine i have um, the map that i created for us to be able to use but more importantly you can see it's been written offline areas this means that i can utilize this map whenever i'm in an area where there's no internet and you get to do that by adding an offline area so if i create add offline area you decide what area uh, do you want to load um, we'll give it a few seconds We'll give it a few seconds. You can see we have area one, so I can download this area and that is what um, Sorry for that. I hope you can now see my screen. Yeah, okay. So um, when you're working with ArcGIS field maps, the first step is to download the app in Play Store or App Store, as I mentioned, sign into your account, and after signing in, you now get to access the maps that are within your um, account, if they are shared maps or if they are maps that you need to utilize. Now, after you've downloaded your map or after you've opened your map, the next step is to be able to now um, start accessing the different components that are within the interface. We'll start with the most obvious, which is the plus. Now, the plus is for you to be able to add components into the map or to add the different, you can see it's directing me back to Nairobi Hill Estate, which is where our offices are located. But I'll just go back. I'll just go back to where we are working in, which is here. So I can now be able to add the different elements. If I want to add the water meters, but the areas or the current, if I want to add the hydrants, if I want to add the control valves, all these things are things that I can be able to choose and add them from this space. That is the first thing. The plus is for collecting. We have another element up here, which allows us to be able to interact with the layers. And this is where you get to either switch on and off layers that you don't need to look at or layers that you're not intending to use at the moment and switching them on and off will help you to realize um, you can see that there's nothing on my map now but it will allow you to then um, 
realize what is relevant, what do you actually want to use or not, and that is what will help in data collection. You can also search. So if, for example, there's a place that um, you commonly use or is a place that you want to use, you can simply just search for it here. And after searching, you'll be directed to that place and that is where you're going to do data collection. More than that, we have um, tools that allow us to be able to either work with base maps. So maybe this base map does not um, make me see things as I want them. I may choose to change either using the default that I have or from a range that is available within the s ArcGIS space. If it's the open street maps, if it's the imagery, you can change them to fit the purpose of the data that you're working with. And then after you've decided that, then you can bookmark. Maybe my data collection today is only going to be focused in Dakar Road. I can create a bookmark for Dakar Road. So I can create a bookmark here for Dakar Road. Yeah, so I can, we have one bookmark for default map extent, which will just take us out, but you can create a bookmark for the places that are of interest to you. After doing that, you can choose to edit multiple, which means you want to edit um, multiple things within your map. If it's the meters, you want to edit 10 meters at a time. You can choose those multiple meters and actually work with them. And then after you've decided that, then the next step is the legend. Now the legend allows you to be able to know what are you actually adding? You'll find the person who made this map is not the same person who's going to utilize this map. It's important for them to understand what is found within the legend so that when they are using it, then they are actually accessing what they understand. So the legend will allow you to be able to see that. And then finally, we have um, the measuring and the markup, which allows you to measure distances, markup areas that you may want to come back to, and finally share. So that is it from um, that is it from when you're looking at field maps as a mobile application, and it's very simple to use. So someone does not necessarily need to have knowledge um, or technical expertise to be able to use this. Your field workforce can be shown how to interact with the different elements and be able to still work with the. Uh, activities or still be able to still do their field activities without really knowing how um, the back end works. Now, um, I will conclude um, there. But before I do that, maybe let me just um, share my screen for a bit. Um, then we can conclude this. So um, to conclude, um, field maps is a tool that can really help us to streamline um, our field workflows as organizations. It can help us to be able to not only guarantee, as I mentioned, the integrity of our workforce or the integrity of our, the data that we use, but it may also be the only map that we need to ensure that our map-centric workflows actually work. Our workforce is able to collect data mark up their maps, um, capture locations, track the spaces that they're supposed to go, complete the assignments of time, and even navigate to the assets that they need to go to without actually going out of the space. And um, this application can be found within our S3 Stan African store. We've, um, from my screen, you can see we have a code there that you can scan and it will take you to the S3 Stan African store. You can access this in many other applications, including the other field applications that you mentioned within the store. Thank you and um, have yourselves a good day.